Richard Van Koppen says, yes, I have agoraphobia and would love to hear about anxiety. Well, that's a, that's a rough thing to have, agoraphobia. So agoraphobics get increasingly isolated and afraid of things outside of their um, domain of familiarity. And often what happens with agoraphobia is that people who develop it are afraid of two things. They're afraid that something is going to go dreadfully wrong with their health, especially with regards to their heart. So they start to become afraid that maybe they'll have a heart attack and that they'll die in public far from a hospital and that they'll make a fool of themselves while they're doing it or while they, while they think they're dying. And so it's a combination of two fears and one is fear of mortality and the other is fear of social judgment. And you might think about those as the two main categories of fear that possess people because one is associated, well, obviously, with mortality and death, and the other is associated with exclusion from the group, which, of course, can lead to mortality and death. And so the agoraphobics get the worst of both worlds. And it's often a disease of middle-aged women, but not always. And there are often people who've been somewhat dependent in their previous lives and then undergo some traumatic event, like a divorce or the death of someone close. And and at the same time are perhaps experiencing heart palpitations that are associated with menopause that brings ideas of mortality to mind and that can trigger a panic attack which is a very um, what would you call it unpleasant experience to say the least um, and then that fear of panic attack starts making people avoid and that's when agoraphobia develops out of anxiety disorders with panic attacks so you go out and Maybe you go to a mall and maybe you're in a crowd and maybe you start thinking about, well, your heartbeat and about the fact that someone close to you has died and maybe then you become aware of your heartbeat and you start to panic because you feel that maybe it's, the beat is irregular or, or, that, or that you can't detect it as well as you usually can. And then that makes your heart accelerate because it makes you afraid and then you get more, more what would you call, sensitive to that and that makes your heart rate beat even faster and then you panic and you want to get to the hospital to get checked out to make sure that you're all right and then you make your fatal mistake which is that you avoid going back to the mall and then you go to a grocery store and the same thing happens and then you start to avoid going to the grocery store then you start go avoid avoiding the subway or taxis or crowds or anywhere you might get trapped and wouldn't be able to get to a hospital soon you end up avoiding everything and that's when your life really starts to become a living hell so the basic way to treat agoraphobia, there's two ways, and one is to develop some control over breathing, to do progressive relaxation, and the way you do that is that you start with your, you start by concentrating on your toes and your feet, and then your ankles, and then your shins and your knees. You move all the way up your body and let the tension flow out of your muscles and regulate your breathing calmly and carefully so that you can learn to relax. And then you go out you go out voluntarily and start to confront the things you're afraid of. So, for example, if you're afraid of the mall, maybe you go to the parking lot and you look at the mall and then you walk close to the door and you look inside, and, you know, and then you go home because that's enough for one day. But you do progressive exposure and that's the base, one of the basic rules of psychotherapy is that if you're afraid of something, you progressively and voluntarily expose yourself to it. And that generally, it's the voluntary exposure that's curative. Right, accidental exposure can make you worse, but voluntary exposure can be curative, and that's sort of associated with the myth of the hero and the dragon. And, you know, the hero is the person who goes out voluntarily to confront the dragon and overcome it and get the treasure. And so, if you voluntarily expose yourself to things you're afraid of, like no more than you can tolerate, then you'll find that you get braver and you learn that you can tolerate the fear, and that can chase the agoraphobia back. And it's very important to do it um, on a regular basis. And if you have agoraphobia, full-fledged agoraphobia, you should probably consult professional help because it's a very tricky condition and it can be very, can really impair you badly. So that's what I would recommend. <laughs>